Hey everyone, Daniel here with Slow Haste. Today, we're gonna to talk about how I've been using the Holy Trinity setup. I don't know who coined that term. May have been Messy Desk, props. Um, but yeah, the Dig Attacked, the Digitone, and the Octatrack have been working so, so well together since I finally integrated them to be a coherent mass of electron gear. And I've been having way too much fun. Wanna show you a song, wanna show you how I've synced them up. So I'm gonna break this video into parts. We're gonna have a jam. We're gonna have like a little MIDI tutorial on how I've set up the, the routing, cabling, MIDI settings on the devices. And then I'm just gonna do a bit of a beat breakdown and talk about the arrangement process because I think that's something that's super important to not lose sight of when you get all of this complicated routing and you can have all these fancy tricks and start having a little bit too much fun. So let's get started with the song. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so quite a bit going on there, but as you can see, definitely tried to utilize each of the boxes to sort of feed into the arrangement and, you know, have purpose um, with, with what I'm doing. I'm doing a bunch of little tricks with each of the boxes, really, in order to kind of add up to um, a greater picture. So to start, let's just do a beat breakdown because I'm really, really excited about this song and I want to talk about the sort of thought process behind the arrangement. So to start, Basically, I have this synth sound that I designed on the digitone. And in my head, I wanted to make something that sounded like sandy waves, which sounds like really basic, right? Like cool vibes, beach, the ocean, whatever. But I literally wanted it to sound like 
waves, right? So you have these waves of different tones coming in and out. And you also have waves of noise and, and drive and distortion kind of mixed in with the sound non-rhythmically. So it's very wavy, very sandy. And then I also wanted to make a patch on the digatone. It was just kind of like fluty wind. So I had this visualization of like elements of the ocean without it being like a beachy song by any means. So you have these cool distinct harmonizations that add together to create different inverted chords and some really nice textural stuff. And then on the dig attack, utilizing the bath sample pack, I chopped up a lot of fun different percussive noise samples. Here, let me play that by itself. So I kind of, here, listen with the kick. I basically rhythmically chopped that like clicky sample to do a little turnaround and have this nice little, little rhythm to it. Very basic, but combined with these two synth patches, This is the, the the meat and potatoes of the song, right? This is where I started. And interestingly enough, I made this before I got the Octatrack, like I mentioned. And I was in the middle of researching the Octatrack when this came together and was trying to think of ways that I could do things like risers and fills on the Digitact and the Digitone. So on track three, I put this trig condition on this little echoey riser type sound um, on step nine. And then here you can see at the, the beginning of the fourth bar of the pattern. And if I want that to come in, I just hold page as the pattern passes through. And I get these, this kind of like echoey passing train sound. And I did some modulation of the sound there. So you get this kind of like forced flange sound, which is pretty cool. And I just thought it kind of fit that ethereal, echoey, washy vibe. And pretty much all else we have in the first pattern is this bass synth. And I used a single cycle triangle waveform for this sound. As you can see, look at that triangle. Look at that single cycle. And obviously I have that looped playing forward. I actually hadn't used any of the single cycle waveforms on the Digitact before making this. And it was really interesting. Um, it's interesting how they, how the sound kind of interacts with everything else. It's very neutral sounding, right? It's not a sample. It's like starting with a blank subtractive synth patch, but on the Digitact. So I admittedly could spend more time getting that to sit a little bit better in the mix. I have um, a little bit of the bass cut off because it's a very, rich, warm, low, woolly sound. Um, I love triangle waves for basses personally, but I, um, again, on the dig attack, just don't have experience with kind of working that into a mix. So if you have any tips with these single cycle waveforms, I'd love to hear them. I just haven't done it a lot and wanna kind of explore playing around with them more because it's super fun and it's a great feature of the dig attack that you can loop the single cycle waveforms to make synth sounds. Anyways, all together, this is what that first pattern sounds like. and you know how the rest of it goes. Um, regarding the second pattern, oh, I forgot, I added in a hi-hat. It's just a hi-hat sample. Again, from the bath sample pack. I think it's actually a, a cymbal loop and I just took like the first three or four hits of the hi-hat and, and looped it. Um, and I thought it sounded really good. Sticking with these two devices before we jump into the Octatrack, the second pattern is pretty similar. I just changed the progression as you can hear in the bass line. And I also changed up the hi-hat pattern. Again, give some more energy and essence and oomph to that percussion section. 
I also patched an arpeggio sound on the digitone. And I'm not going to get too into sound design here because I could talk about all of this forever. I just want to show you how I arranged the piece. And I also have this same patch from the first pattern, but clearly to match the chord progression and mimic what the bass is doing. And I do still have that riser, um, you know, with the trig condition for, for the fill. So that's there too. So this is lovely and all right, um, but I kind of hit a wall with it before I moved. This was one of the last pieces that I made and I never ended up taking it anywhere. And getting the Octatrack totally changed that for me. And like I said before, this is really about using some of the features of each of these instruments, just a little bit from everything to create something bigger than the sum of its parts, right? Which is, I think, how I kind of tend to look at arrangements. You have all of these little tiny textures that kind of add up to fill out a frequency spectrum and to create movement and motion and really build out a song. So I'm doing the same thing here. I have my dig attack on drums primarily and being the brain. I have the digitone on textures and synths and melodies and everything but bass that has a melody basically. And the Octatrack is adding the spice, it's adding the flavor because that's what the Octatrack is really good at. It's super unique and quirky and can do a lot of random weird things that not a lot of other instruments can do. So the first thing I'm doing with it is using the through machine, which I'll explain later how I set that up as I mentioned, but basically I set track one to a through machine, have a stereo pair coming from the Digitact that has the Digitone and the Digitact mix. I'll talk about why I didn't do two separate stereo pairs and two different through machines later. It's not really a big deal, but I don't want to get into that now. I actually do also have another set of samples that I used on the Octatrack. I had the space on the Digitact, but um, I just added them as I was kind of like building out the arrangement and programming scenes with the crossfader. So it is what it is, but I have this symbol loop. And then I have this synth loop that I chopped up and used the slice grid to, um, to slice up into 16 different slices. And then I arranged them, uh, created random locks. Um, so as you can see, I have every other beat on my 64 step pattern locked to a random slice for each pattern. And then I put a saw wave LFO to pump the volume. And I put the dark reverb on that track as well. Again, could have done something similar on the dig attack, but um, I'm glad I did it on this because once I put the sample in, I decided to slice it up randomly and uh, yeah, it ended up sounding really cool as a way to continue to build the song. Anyways, the big thing that I think, you know, I keep coming back to this and so does everyone else for a reason, but the big thing that the Octatrack provides is that sort of movement with the ability to just add effects in real time using the crossfader. It adds a performative aspect to the piece that basically makes every time I play it different. So I have three different scenes. The first is a crazy low pass filter, as you can see. Fair amount of resonance there. The second one implements the lo-fi effect, as does the third one. But this one is more rhythmic, so it's really cool because here, let me bring in everything else. When you when you're at different points on the crossfader, you get varying degrees of the frequency of uh, of the sort of tremolo effect that the lo-fi has to offer. So. which is really cool to kind of give things like a progressive rhythmic chopping effect with like a stepped ramp or even a linear ramp um, to kind of change up that, but use it rhythmically. And then the third scene that I have is just this really, really heavily bit reduced, fuzzy, high passed sound to act as a contrast to that, but also build on that. So 
so as you can see even with those three scenes you could do some really cool rhythmic transition stuff and like it's addicting to to just play around with those and listen to a mix of a certain pattern uh it's it's so much fun and again one of the reasons that i think the octatrack really excels i don't know any other devices that you can kind of do that with in real time and it's a great way to kind of just as you practice a piece a performance of a piece just try to change things up a little bit every time and find cool transitions that work at certain parts of a pattern and take notes and and try to play off of that so yeah it's super fun to use that kind of stuff for transitions like in conjunction with the the fills And if I remembered to, I would have switched to pattern two via the dig attack. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's foolproof. It's a foolproof way to do transitions and you can, you can set up any set of sounds that you want. I just have come to really enjoy using this like obnoxious low pass filter and varying levels of, of bit and sample reduction with the lo-fi effect, because I think it adds a cool, unique sound to the kind of like hazy fuzziness of uh, the synths that are present in this song. So yeah, that's a breakdown of the beat and how it kind of came to be. And hopefully just getting a, a better idea of all those individual parts helps you kind of think up of different ways that you can arrange stuff. And maybe knowing what all the parts are now, go, go back and listen to how I kind of bring them in and fade them out to kind of give yourself ideas on how you can use percussive textures as a way to kind of pair with, with other certain elements that you want to bring in, um, like that main synth patch on the digitone. That's the main part of the song, right? So I spent a lot of time building that up and letting it loop so you can kind of get a feel for the progression because it doesn't really have much rhythm on its own, but it does really kind of push forward all the other elements of the song in the context of everything. Hopefully those are some fun songwriting tips and tricks for you. And now I'm going to get into a quick tutorial and rundown of how I routed everything in terms of outputs, inputs, and MIDI. So I'm not going to get too into the syncing of the dig attack and the dig tone. I have made a separate video about that, which I will link. So go check that out if you want the basics. I'm going to go over more so the cable routing and um, why I did what I did and how I set it up with Octatrack. Because, oh, I did some troubleshooting and it was just because of a very, very simple, stupid mistake that I don't want you to make as well. So very quickly in terms of workflow, the dig attack is my brain. The dig attack is my brain because I had this project set up on the dig attack and the dig tone before I even got the Octatrack. So all my MIDI settings were good to go. I figured it'd be easiest just to add on to it, and I'm used to using the dig attack as the brain anyway. So my MIDI settings are set up to have the transport and the program change sent out. So I have my MIDI out going from my dig attack to the digitone, and from the digitone, I have the MIDI through, which basically acts as a doubler, and that is going into the octatrack. Dig attack controls everything MIDI wise. In terms of audio routing, I have the digitone going into the dig attack because I like the compressor on the dig attack, and I find that really valuable. And then I have the pair sent as one stereo pair into the Octatrack. Now here's where the through machine comes in. And I realized that I could use two through machines and use both stereo inputs to have separate control over the Digitact and the Digitone. But if you've been watching the channel, you know that I'm taking it very slow with the Octatrack. I feel very comfortable with it as a sampler and sequencer, and now I'm getting into some of the other functionality, so I wanted to start small. I realize it wouldn't be insanely more complicated to add a, a separate stereo pair and set that up, but I just thought I'd keep it simple, especially because I already had most of this arrangement worked out on these two boxes anyways. So I have stereo input A and B sent to track one as a through machine. Now, what is a through machine, you might ask? Well, a through machine lets the audio through the machine more importantly, allows you to do things like enter trigless trigs and manipulate it with LFOs and set up scenes so you can utilize the crossfader to affect external audio. This is just breaking the surface of the Octatrack's capabilities as a performance mixer, a performance sampled mangler, basically, um, as it is advertised. So I figured it would be a good place to sort of explore that and explain my process. And then in the source page, you have to make sure that you have input A and B selected. Something that's really important in order for a through machine to work and this is really silly, but it's just the way it is. You have to go into the grid and put down a trig on step one, and that will allow the machine to pass audio through. If you can see, hopefully you can see there's a little play button um, that's indicated on the track one indicator on the screen. And if I mash stop, which I do, 
when I am playing with the the dig attack and, and the dig tone because it cuts off all the audio. So it's a bad habit that I've been having to try to break on this. Um, audio will only pass through if here. See, there's no audio coming through. And now there is. So you can double stop it, which is what I do. But as soon as you triple stop it, the through machine will stop because the track will stop playing. So just be careful, be aware of that, and you'll be fine. So that's all you have to do to set up the through machine to pass audio through. But let's talk about MIDI really quickly because I wanted to basically create a project so I have all of the banks set up on this Digitone, Digitact project that I set up with those two devices, and I could just create a new project and enter in the banks so the banks are, you know, the same across all projects and I don't have to be confused about mismatch numbers and make six spreadsheets just so I know what song I'm trying to play. But if you've set up MIDI with the Digitact and Digitone, you're not gonna have any issues with setting up MIDI on OctaTrack unless you're me. So what you wanna do is just hold function and MIDI to get to the MIDI sync menu. And you can access this in the project settings as well, but this is just a shortcut. You can navigate these menus with the left and right arrows and then check and uncheck boxes by clicking yes and no. So transport, receive, clock, receive, and so what happened to me, and this is very Daniel brain of me, but for some reason I was in the clock setting and I was like, okay, clock receive. And then I moved the arrow up and I said, okay, now I'm on transport receive. And I clicked yes. And I couldn't get it past my head that just because I was looking at this box didn't mean that I didn't have a different box highlighted. That might not make any sense to you, but I've literally picked out wrong items at the grocery store this way, looking at one product and then just reaching for a different product on another shelf. And my brain tells me that I got the product that I looked at. Anyways, that's useless information for you to know. But it was a simple mistake and it lost me like 30 minutes of trying to set this up, not understanding why the clock was working, but the transport was not because I was just literally looking in the wrong box. Anyways, so then you wanna set up your program change to receive. So this is like when you switch a pattern, that's a program change. And I just set everything to channel 16. Um, you can use the auto channel, but um, I just know that I'm not really gonna use any of the other MIDI channels, especially not 16, so I just set it to that. As long as it's the same, you won't have an issue. That's really it for the MIDI tutorial. Nothing too crazy. And it's great because you hit play in one place and everything plays. You go from pattern one to pattern two on one place and everything switches to pattern two. So it's really nice. Um, it's really great to have everything up and running. And as somebody who is very MIDI inhibited, I just like, I can't, for some reason, MIDI has always been such a struggle for me. This is a really good place to start because Electron makes it super easy to get everything synced up. You don't have to worry about um, sending specific messages to specific channels or anything like that. So if you're afraid to jump into MIDI, just try to set up your Electron devices together. It's super easy. Again, please check out that other video if you want to get a more directed tutorial on syncing the dig attack and the digitone. Again, that will be linked in the description of the video. And if you found any of this useful or entertaining, please do consider taking a look at the Patreon linked in the description of this video as well. It's the best and easiest way to support me directly and allows me to continue putting time and effort and energy into this channel. And there are some really great perks too. You can get some music for free. You can sign up for different tiers of lessons or one-on-one -on -one sessions with me to learn about synths or get actual lessons on the digitone, digitact, octatrack, OP1 and even modular, even though I don't have any modular synths anymore, I have experience getting started with the system and can definitely give you some pointers. So definitely check that out if you're interested in supporting me. Otherwise, you just watching the videos and being here is really, really meaningful to me in, its, in and of its own. I know that everybody's time is limited and social media competes with everybody's time in a way that is unlike anything that has ever existed in the world. So the fact that you potentially are even listening to me talk about other ways to support me is crazy to me. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you as always for sticking around to the end. And I hope you enjoy whatever you got going on today. Peace.